Hi there, board certified dermatologist, Dr. Cynthia Bailey and skin wellness expert. And today I'm going to talk about glycemic index. So you may be seeing in the media talk about the amount of sugars in food and how that is bad for the human body how it can lead to a number of conditions, including inflammatory skin conditions that have been what I've treated over the course of my lifetime. You know, up until recently, we didn't have really good connections between diet and skin problems. And now all of a sudden, thank goodness, there's a flurry of scientific information that's connecting the two pieces of the puzzle that I've observed for years in the exam room. So we know now that when you have a diet with a lot of sugar in it, it leads to inflammation. So sugar is pro-inflammatory. In addition, when your diet is constantly having spikes in your blood sugar because you're eating foods that send your sugar out of control, it causes something called glycative stress and that damages structures, causes degenerative changes, aging, and is pro-inflammatory. From a skin perspective, many of the common skin conditions that I've treated over the years are now being looked at through the lens of inflammation. So in the past, acne, for example, we thought it was about bacteria, oil, cells getting clogged in the pores, we didn't know that it was actually an inflammatory condition and that diet has a lot to do with it. That when you eat a lot of high glycemic foods, meaning foods that really spike your blood sugar, that actually will drive your acne. Um, seborrheic dermatitis is another condition. So dandruff either on the scalp or on the face, uh, that's a, an inflammatory dermatosis. And if you're eating a diet that is pro-inflammatory, you're more likely to suffer from seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis as well, uh, rosacea as well. And in fact, we are now even able to uh, associate other, we call them comorbidities, meaning medical conditions that are seen together with these inflammatory skin conditions because the high sugar the dietary indiscretions fuel the whole shebang. And so glycemic index is important for you to understand so that you can make food choices that help your skin and the added benefit is that they're going to help your body in general. So what is the glycemic index? The glycemic index is the measure of how fast a food is gonna send your blood sugar up and give you a blood sugar spike. Some of it you can sort of intuit. I mean, you know if you're going to eat cookies and candies and cakes, that of course, they're full of sugar, they're gonna you know, send your blood sugar screaming and you can almost feel it like you've just mainlined sugar, at least I can. I feel it like, oh, my temples hurt. Ah, you know, it's like it just mainlined sugar. Uh, but there are some foods that aren't quite as easy to understand, and those would be refined carbohydrates. So you think, oh, I'm eating a piece of white bread or a bagel. That doesn't have sugar in it. How come that would be a high glycemic food? Well, it's because the, the wheat has been so refined that when you eat it, it's really simple for your body's digestive system to just sort of boo -boo, quick, it's done, and it's absorbed quickly into your blood system, and the sugar goes up quickly. In addition, if the foods aren't, uh, if the sugar in the food isn't trapped and bound with things like fiber, fat, um, other nutrients, protein, it's going to be much easier for your digestive system to just sort of make done with it. Your blood sugar rises and that sends you into a spike and that's considered a high glycemic food. So for the most part, junk food would come into the category of high glycemic food. Uh, those lovely little treats of candies and cakes and you know french fries and even though there's some fat in the french fries those are all going to be higher glycemic foods medium level glycemic index foods are ones that take longer for your body to digest for example an unpeeled boiled potato is going to be a medium glycemic index food 
um, whole wheat bread that's fully milled, so it's not coarse, but it's whole wheat, that's a medium glycemic food. Dried fruits are medium glycemic foods, bananas, sweet potatoes. So those take a little longer. Your body has to kind of squish it around, squirt some enzymes, use some acid before it actually gets digested and starts to sort of slowly or more slowly, I should say, raise your blood sugar. So your blood sugar will go up over a slower and more sustained time. Those are medium glycemic index foods. Low glycemic index foods, that's the sweet spot and you wanna to try to learn to love those. And what those do is they create a slow and steady, fairly even blood sugar level throughout the day instead of these spikes that you know go quickly and your body has to send all this insulin to get that stuff packed away before all this glycative, glycative stress happens. So low glycemic foods are the, su are the sweet spot. And those include coarsely grained wheat, for example. So the more you break and pulverize that wheat, the higher the glycemic index. And if you take the bran away, well then it becomes a high glycemic index food. So you want coarsely uh, ground grains, you want beans, they're harder to digest, seeds, nuts, uh, proteins. So the lower glycemic foods are just gonna give you a slow and steady blood sugar. The beauty is you're not gonna have the glycative stress. They're not pro-inflammatory. And you're also not going to have that crashing blood sugar that leaves you, you know, just desperate to stick something else in your mouth because you're running out of energy. So when you're, when you're crafting your meal, you want to try to choose the low glycemic index foods and make sure that you have plenty of those on your plate and going into your mouth. Also, if your uh, meal has high fiber in it, it's going to take your digestive tract longer to deal with everything you just stuck in there. Um, if there's some oil, preferably good oil like olive oil or omega-3 rich oils like in salmon, um, it's going to take your body a, a, a longer time to contend with that mishmash you just gave the your stomach and your intestines. Raw and coarser food are going to take a longer time for your body to deal with. And actually the less cooking often the uh, lower the glycemic index of the food. So you want to try to skew your diet to favor low glycemic foods fed to your body throughout the day to minimize the mainlining glucose spikes that cause the inflammation and the glycative stress that result in beautiful inflammatory dermatoses that I get to treat and also the many degenerative changes uh, associated with aging. So, that's a dermatologist's explanation for the glycemic index and how to uh, game that in your diet to support healthy skin and to suppress many of the inflammatory skin conditions that we treat in my office. So I hope that helped and thank you very much for listening. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.